Well, the storyline, Albert, going into this season, I think, would be, can Tom Brady repeat? Can the Buccaneers go back-to-back? Does he have one more left in him? But that doesn't seem to be on everybody's top of mind here in July as we head into camp next week. And it's all about Aaron Rodgers, and it's all about his status with the Green Bay Packers. Report coming out, turning down an offer to become the highest-paid player in the NFL. What does that say about his future in Green Bay, and where do you see him playing football next year? I mean, quite honestly, I don't think it tells us anything we didn't already know. Um, you know, the Packers were out there. I talked to Brian Gutekunst, the GM for the Packers, right before the draft, um, or right after the draft, about it. And um, you know, like they, the, the Packers have never had an issue with the idea that they might have to adjust Aaron Rodgers' contract. Um, you know, because he, you know, played at an MVP level last year, actually won the award, and um, you know, and 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 the market has moved at his position significantly, and so. Yeah, I, I don't think the contract was ever the issue here. Um, I think the issue was communication. I think the issue was the approach the team's taking. I think the issue is what Aaron Rodgers wants um, the last few years of his career. I don't think it was ever money. Now, I mean, you know, would it help at the end of the day um, if the Packers showed commitment to Aaron Rodgers monetarily and – showed you're our guy and we're not pulling the rug out from underneath you um, and, and going to Jordan Love prematurely um, in, you know, what they put in front of him contractually. Yeah, that would help. But, yeah, you know, I don't think that that's the money. Again, that's about, you know, the commitment to Rodgers and where the organization is going to be and how the organization is going to operate over the next couple of years. Albert Breer joins the show, senior NFL reporter for the Monday Morning Quarterback. Ben Lyons in for Rich, the Rich Eisen Show. But Albert, it would seem to me that if Aaron were solely focused on winning and wanting to find the best situation that gave him a chance to go to another Super Bowl, it would be in Green Bay, where he was a half away at home last year from going to play for another Lombardi. But if it's not about money, it's not about winning, what is he asking for? What does he want? Well, so I think what started this was the communication issue and the fact that he found out about, you know, Jordan Love and the Packers' interest in Jordan Love while they were on the clock. Like, I think that that, you know, I think that basically sounded the alarm for him. And, you know, made him feel like right or wrong that he was on the clock as the quarterback of the Packers. Um, you know, and I think that, that there's a sort of undercurrent of that um, in their relationship since. And so I think it's, you know, the relationship between Rodgers and the front office, I don't think it's so much the coaches, but the relationship between Rodgers and the front office was strained by that. You know, and then I think the other piece of it, um, and I think that this goes for a lot of the quarterback movement over the year, um, is what happened in Tampa. And, you know, it's not just that Tom Brady got an operation built around him. It's not just that the Bucks are building on his timetable and with, um, you know, a certain sense of urgency. It's that it worked. You know, it's that, like, I think for guys that were knocked out of the playoffs last year at that position that are older, they're looking at it and they're saying, give me some of that. And, you know, I, I, I think not only do they want it because they want to have organizations centered around them, um, but I think they also want it because they know that's what they're up against in, in having to get past the Buccaneers the next couple of years. And so I think for your Russell Wilson, for your Aaron Rodgers, for even a Matthew Stafford, Part of the reason there was case rattling this year at the quarterback position is because of um, you know what we're seeing and where the sport may be going now. And you can call it the LeBronization of the sport um, if you want. And I would argue that Darren Rodgers is in a great situation right now in Green Bay um, to go and win a championship. You know, but I can also see where other quarterbacks want what Brady has and feel like they might have a tough time competing with an organization that's operating on the sort of short timetable that the Bucks are operating on. I'm glad you mentioned player mobility is what I was going to ask you next, because I feel like the NFL has done a lot to try to prevent players, star players, from changing teams in the prime of their career. It becomes difficult. It gets played out in the media. It gets stretched out for a long time. The NBA has had a lot of success with it. I think it's, it's inspired an entire generation of fans to follow players and not simply their local teams. Do you think that this Rodgers situation will be a watershed mark moment for the NFL moving forward and we'll see uh, more fluid player mobility, especially at the quarterback position? I think um... – I think you used the wrong word there. Um, he said, especially the quarterback position. I think to some degree it might be only the quarterback position. 
Um, and I mean, well, you know, with rare exceptions for players that are considered, you know, sort of generational talents at their spots. Um, I don't think a lot of players can pull this off. I just think it's too hard to make money in the NFL. And I think too many guys are in the spot where it's, you know, if I can find a way to make money, I'm going to do it any way I can do it. And I don't want to rock the boat because my earning power is fleeting. Um, you know, the NBA and the NFL are different that way in that NFL players' careers last longer, don't last as long. And um, they're going to have a harder time finding their way to the top of the market just because there are more NFL players than there are NBA players. They're more replaceable than NBA players are. And so, you know, I, I think you, you might see more players try this. And I think the, I think the, the issue, though, is that there are very few players that have the leverage to pull it off. And, you know, really the guys who have the leverage to pull it off are guys who have a lot of money in their bank accounts. And they're the kinds of guys where teams can look at it and say, that's the kind of guy that I'm willing to go all in on and give up big time draft capital to go and get. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that you could see more of it, the quarterback position and maybe a couple other spots um, where, you know, players are valued at that level. But I don't think that this is going to change the way business is done in the NFL for say your you're, you're just your normal, really solid, even Pro Bowl linebacker, or your really solid Pro Bowl guard. I think if there is change that comes from this, I think it's going to be sort of reserved for the elite of the elite. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.